Hi, and this is Michael from TechOnline.se. Today I'm going to talk about techniques for whitelisting email. Whitelisting email means that you make it possible for email messages to prove that they are from whom they claim to be. This will help the emails to be placed in the inbox of the recipients instead of in the spam folder. The three most common techniques for doing this are reverse lookup, send a policy framework, and the main key is identified mail. Some email problems you might want to solve are Recipients complain that the emails from you never go to the inbox. Instead, they go to the spam folder or get totally blocked. Also, spam could be sent to recipients in other domains, with you as the sender, although you didn't send anything. Your domain name has become blacklisted by some other domains. Some solutions then. Well, the first one is uh, making sure your mail server is not configured as an open relay. You could also set up a reverse lookup zone for your domain. This is both of these are very important. Setting up an SPF record and possibly DKIM as well. Making sure your mail server is not configured as an open relay. Uh, you can use this site uh, administered by Microsoft for checking. Exchange 2007, 2010 and 2013 uh, are normally secure by default so there is not a big chance that any of those uh, are open relays. But you need to check it anyway to make sure. Uh, if you should have this problem, uh, you can run two PowerShell commands, one uh, piped into the other one, get receive connector piped in to remove AD permissions, as you can see in this slide, uh, and the problem will be fixed for you. Uh, setting up a reverse lookup zone then. Uh, you should remember that your IP addresses are under the control of your ISP. So the ISP will have to do this for you. There's no need for the internal AD sites to have reverse lookup enabled. You can if you want to, but there's no real need for your mail server to work as it should. A reverse lookup zone maps IP addresses to DNS names. So as you remember, DNS to IP address is the other way, that's the normal DNS. You have a uh, DNS name and you want the IP address for it, uh, but this is the other way. If you have a reverse lookup zone, the destination mail server can find your mail server's DNS name using your IP address. Your IP addresses are under the control of your ISP, so the ISP will have to do this for you, as I said before. Uh, you should remember that your ISP only will do this for you if you have a static business grade IP address. If you have just a reserved IP address with a normal consumer grade uh, IP address, uh, then they will not do it for you. In that case, you will have to proxy your emails uh, through DynDNS, now IP.com, or similar service. That is a good solution, by the way. So, how do you set up the SPF then? No software is needed. 
a txt record is created in your public dns domain godaddy lupia whatever you have don't worry about syntax most domain registrants have uh, wizards for it you don't need to do anything in your local dns uh, well if uh, your domain register don't have an uh, DNA uh, generator for this you can always google for SPF generator and one of the first links uh, will do this for you a string like this will work in most cases how does SPF affect your network then? Well, SPF requires no extra uh, software on sending MTA, uh, no extra software on client machines. A TXT record uh, with an SPF string is created for the public DNS, and you are done. And remember, SPF is pass passive. Your emails will be accepted without SPF check by MTAs, without SPF filter. Implementation of SPF can in most cases be done without involvement of uh, company management. So what happens if your email message, uh, to your email message when it is received by an MTA with an SPF filter? Well, when your email uh, arrives at the destination, the receiver's SPF filter will check your IP against the SPF record in your DNS before accepting your email. If the IP address uh, corresponds with the IP addresses associated with your SPF records, the mail is accepted. If your IP is unknown to the SPF record, the mail gets a spam warning in the subject line, can zap in the spam folder, or get blocked. If your domain has no SPF record, your email will get a higher uh, spam confidence level, and it might end up in the spam folder. Very strict spam folders uh, will block the message. If the MTA does not implement SPF, the email will be accepted and the SPF record in your DNS will not be checked at all. My domain register has a DKIM button beside the SPF button. Should I insert the DKIM right, right away uh, when I'm doing this with the SPF? Well, no. DKIM requires third party software, uh, third-party DKIM signing software on your mail server. Without the DKIM signing software, you will start blocking your e own emails. Well, a few words about how DKIM works then. A DKIM record is a text record. The DKIM string contains the DKIM public key. If the DKIM signer add-ons is installed on your MTA, a digital signature, a private key, is added to every email that you send. If the receiving MTA has a, the DKIM verifier add-on enabled, it checks the digital signature, the sender's public key and the DKIM record. If the private and public keys match, the message is accepted. If the private and public keys don't uh, match, the message is blocked. If the receiving MTA does not have the DKIM verifier add-on installed, both public and private keys are ignored. Can DMARC be used for whitelisting? DMARC does not do anything to whitelist your outgoing email. It's only useful for monitoring and logging the filtering of e e incoming emails only. DMARC requires both SPF and DKIM to be in place. 
Many domain registrars have DMA, DMARC wizards that helps you create the DMARC string. So to sum up, whitelisting starts with uh, checking if the email server is an open relay and closing it if necessary. The second most important thing is uh, setting up a reverse lookup zone for your domain name. As a minimum, an SPF record should be created for your domain. DKIM gives you ability to digitally sign your emails, but requires extra software to be installed on the MTA. DMARC is useful for logging what is filtered as spam and what is not. It does not contribute to work while listing your emails. Do I need them? Well, remember, more than 60% of all email is spam. Most mail servers have spam filters installed today. And uh, remember, email that you know have passed through in the past might one day start ending up in the email in the spam folders of the recipients, because sometimes organizations are flooded with spam, and admins have to respond by installing strict anti-spam measures. This happens all the time. With SPF DKIM in place, you can lower your scam confidence level much enough to avoid getting caught even in the strictest spam filters. In the US, 80% of all mail has DMARC enabled, so don't hesitate. 